Happy Sabbath, saints of God. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Wherever you are joining us from, we want to express our sincere gratitude and our thanks for always being part of this show. Remember, we are discussing the fruit of the Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit on our present Truth Talk Show channel. I have my team as usual, Dr. Esther Asari, Dr. Ivan Amos, and Dr. Gertrude Bampoy. I am your host, Steve. By the grace of God, we are going to look at one of the fruit of the spirit. Last week, we dealt with gentleness. We got the brother or the sister of that particular fruit of the spirit, which is kindness. But before we dive into the discussion proper, you ask Dr. Gertrude to pray for us. Shall we pray? A kind and heavenly father, we give you thanks. We adore your holy name, that it has been your will for us to be here on the Sabbath day. Father, as we gather to discuss about this important fruit of the Spirit. We pray that your Holy Spirit will be with all of us, with our listeners, with all those who will partake in this discussion. We pray that you impress upon our hearts each and every single message that you have for us today. Be with us till the end. In the mighty name of Jesus, have I prayed. Amen. Amen. Amen, amen. Thank you so much, Sister Gertrude, for doing the honors and praying for us. I'm going to do the ritual of giving an introduction to this important study. I want us to pay heed to these introductions as they are very important in giving us the perspective of what discussion is all about. And I'm so glad to always take the lead in this direction. You're looking at one of the fruit of the spirit, which is known as kindness. Kindness is also referred to as goodness in some other translations. Kindness is highly valued virtue in the Bible. And it's often associated with love and compassion. It is an attribute of God and is demonstrated through his actions towards humanity. The Greek word for kindness is charistotis, which means usefulness or useful service or benignity. It's use to describe person who is gentle. That's why I said it is a brother or a sister of gentleness, considerate and helpful towards others. Kindness is not just about being nice people, but also about being compassionate and empathetic towards them. It involves putting others before oneself and showing love and care for them. The Bible teaches that kindness is an essential part of Christian living. In Colossians chapter 3, verse 12, Paul encourages believers to clothe themselves with kindness as part of their new nature in Christ. He continues in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 33, and admonished believers and instructed them to be kind to one another, tender-hearted and forgiving one another as God in Christ forgave us. Jesus Christ is the ultimate example of kindness. He showed kindness to everyone. He met them regardless of their social status or background. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and forgave sinners. His ultimate act of kindness was on dying on the cross for the sins of humanity. This beloved 
is my introduction to kindness. And we invite our first speaker, Elder Ivan Amos, to give us a little bit perspective. Subtract or add to what I've said. So Elder, the floor is yours and kindly take over and expand further on the topic kindness. Thank you. All right. Uh, good day, viewers. It's uh, a joy to come again once more on this channel with the continuation of our series. Kindness is a word that some parents use to name their children, especially the female gender. Uh, there are many ladies that are called kindness that portrays the desire in people to have their children manifest that fruit of the spirit. As Elder rightly introduced, kindness is interlinked with other fruits or other components of the fruit. In the beginning of this series, it was highlighted that it is fruit, not fruits. The fruit has different components. It has seed, it has the cover, it has the juice, we can see how these components are interrelated and inseparable. For instance, love, love and kindness and gentleness. This, you cannot separate them. If I love my neighbor, I will be kind to him. I will be gentle to him. It's a component of the fruit of the spirit and its manifestation comes along with other components. It's, I think that is what I can say for now. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, Dr. Sari, we're talking about this fruit of the spirit. What biblical character? I hope that, <laughs> <laughs> I hope that the ultimate choice. Today, I don't want to guess. I've always gotten all the guesses correct. I don't want to guess. Mm. Uh, I'll not say David or Jonathan or Christ. <laughs> um, or uh, Joseph. So please kindly us your character thank you so much um, i like to talk about there are so many people to talk about but let me just focus on ruth and naomi the kindness that she showed to her daughters-in-law and ruth in turn showed that kindness to her when naomi needed somebody you know the story of Naomi that they left their original place of where they lived, their country, to another place because of a famine. But whilst in this foreign land, her sons, so she went with her husband and her two sons, who also got married to Opa and Ruth. All the men passed away. And now Naomi decided to go back to her home country. And we see how Ruth was into to Naomi because she's going back to nothing. She came with family. Now she's going back to nothing. And her decision to go with Naomi and to serve the God that Naomi served, to be with her wherever she went is an act of kindness. And during my research, it, there was a statement that you show kindness in such a way that you do unto others as you want others to do to you. A kind person would always act in a way that they want others to act or would want others to act towards them. We see Ruth serve Naomi throughout as they were in a foreign land, getting a job, bringing food home caring for her as her mother-in-law and that is an act of kindness because it's not easy to leave your place of comfort all of us are foreigners in china it has not been easy to leave our home countries and follow someone somewhere when you know that there is the probability that there will nothing will come out of it because we know in the tradition of israel when your husband or the one you are married to passes away, 
if there is a younger son, you know that you have a future because you'll be married to this person and you multiply or start a generation with this person. But youth is following Naomi, who has no son. There's nothing bright about the future, but she showed kindness because Naomi had showed her kindness as a mother-in-law and went ahead and we know what goes on to give us. And this is what I would like to focus on, leaving your comfort zone. Kindness would, at a point, make you decide to live a place of comfort or do something outside of your comfort zone. So you would really show who Christ is to the next or the person you are showing kindness to. Amen. Thank you. This is a very complex relationship. If you want to do the mathematics, <laughs> I mean, you, you actually will, will come to zero, as you, read, you rightly said. But she entreated the mother-in-law that you shouldn't <laughs> tell her to go because her God is going to be her God. Where they will bury her, he goes. Like, if she had not shown this kind of... And, and we see this happening in, in our family lives, in our social life where people might ascribe and say so many things. mother-in-law might have even accused this daughter-in-law that she has even killed the sons. And they will have been so, that acrimony that will have surrounded this kind of family. I don't think he would have said those things if the mother-in-law was not kind to her. And I think that is a very good biblical example that is worth emulating. Sister Gertrude, your biblical character and why you've chosen that example or a personal experience that you want to share with us. Thank you. Today, Elder, you didn't let us give us our intro. The way I prepare. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's intro cum. Uh, intro cum. <laughs> Your biblical character. You know, you, you started <laughs> last, last week with Elder Ivan. When you, uh, <laughs> last, when you combine that, you say we should go by that. So I said, I said, I said that particular proposal. <laughs> okay. Uh, I, I want to talk about um, generally what kindness is about. I read somewhere that kindness is manifested by what we say and do. And more importantly, by how we say it and do it and why we say it and do it so it encompasses the what the how and why in all actions in every action there is a what in every action there is a how mm -hmm. and there is a why you encounter somebody and the person is angrily yelling at you first of all what are you going to say? Secondly, how are you going to say it? And why are you saying what you want to say and how you want to say it? It is a thorough thought of what you want to say and what you want to do. If you are able to maintain that good composure in every situation, be it good or bad, thinking through what you want to say, I am sure that you exhibit the kindness that is in you. It mostly affects us when we do the right thing. It has that impact on us that even our words and our minds and everything gets distorted. A simple rule of knowing what, how, why will give you a clear guideline as to what you have to say. Because kind words are the most important part of I think every dealing and words hold so much power that if we do not pay attention to what we say, how we say it and why we are saying it, the kindness in us will not be portrayed. I think the actions are there, but then I, I am emphasizing on the words because we use words more often than our actions. And I also want to talk about how we are being selective with kindness. So some of us possess, I term it selective kindness. We are kind to a certain people. We are kind in certain situations. We are kind in 
uh, setting circumstances. It depends on when we show our kindness. <laughs> and it comes sometimes, it comes naturally. It's not like you have really decided not to show kindness, but it's like looking at the situation, looking at the people and the person you are dealing with, you have to be kind or not. And Jesus gives a perfect example and an answer to that in Matthew chapter 5, verse 43 to 48, where he tells us that if we do good to those who are good to us, what benefit do we get? We do not get benefit, but then we should love our enemies. We should do good to those who hate us. And he goes on and on to explain the reason why we have to do good to all kinds of people. So for my introduction, I would say that, and I would end with, the fact that we don't have to be selective when doing good or being kind to others. Biblical character, Docas, a very common, I am thankful that Elder didn't mention Docas because that would have worked. <laughs> <laughs> so Docas is that as a biblical woman character, I look up to, I look up to Docas a lot being kind to your neighbors, being kind to all those who are around you to the extent that even when you are in trouble, people will pray for you. People that you don't even associate yourself with, but you just be, you were just kind to them. They are not of your faith. They are not of your tribal group. You don't know them, but you were just kind to them and they will come and defend you. They will come and pray for you and wish you goodwill. That is what kindness is about. We do not have to be selective about it. We have to share whatever we have, however we want to do it. But everything should be in a kind and a good manner. Amen. 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 I share this particular post and the kind of consternation it generated. Even now, uh, uh, there's, uh, there's a pending question I plan to respond to. And that is the issue that Sister get you talked about where we are supposed to show kindness we are supposed to love our enemies and do good to them people were struggling to understand and they, they are saying that uh, as it makes us weak that is the conclusion that it makes africans weak it is our enemy and then we have to repay two for a tooth and knife for an eye but we are rather preaching Forgiveness, you are preaching, being kind to those uh, people. And the Bible talks about heaping coal on their, on their head if you do that. Uh, it's actually not maybe how we have taken it literal to call me. But at appropriate time, I think if people are listening to this, it's another platform where they can also learn why Christ said that. Elder Ivan, please take over from me and give me your legal character and why. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sister Getty. You have really spoken the core message I have for today. Uh, let me use the Good Samaritan as my biblical character as it goes in line with the key message I have for myself and for listeners with respect to being kind. The story of the Good Samaritan, that was a parable given by Jesus Christ. Someone who was an Israelite was traveling to Jericho and he was attacked and robbed. The robbers left him helpless, but the good Samaritan, when he came as opposed to the actions of the priests, those that we are considered religious leaders, they just uh, bypass him. As history made us to understand biblical history in the scriptures, the Samaritans and the Israelites were are not in good terms. It is expected that this Samaritan will also bypass his victim. But he took him down his wound. He was on a donkey. He came down. He put him there and took him to a place where he can be taken good care of. He even left some money, asking them that he will come back if in case what he leave with them is not sufficient. He is going to top it up. So that is an example of kindness. I call it godly kindness. Because when I look at this subject of kindness critically, I discover that there is godly and there is worldly kindness. There is true kindness that is a fruit of the Holy Spirit. 
and there is a counterfeit kindness that is driven by questionable motive and uh, questionable motivation. As Sister Yeti have started uh, touching on that, we are kind to those are around us, but if we scrutinize our hearts critically, we will discover that that kindness is selfish in nature. There are so many scenarios that we can give example that we manifest kindness. Based on our judgment, we have been kind, but that is actually selfishness. If, for instance, I can have some money, my friend is broke. He come and asks for loan. I give him loan, not because I am passionate about him solving his problem, but because I foresee that in the future, I myself may be broke so that I can go to him and collect loan. In reference to what I did to him in the past, uh, it's a kind of insurance. Although it appears that is kindness, I've assisted him, but the motive and the motivation has made the whole action questionable. Like Proverbs 21 verse 2 says that we, all the ways of a man seemed right, right in his eyes, but the Lord pondered the heart. You know, I can visit someone in the hospital, to encourage him, but the motive, the essence of the visit could be that I am thinking probably tomorrow if I'm down, they, they should come also and visit me. Or I go for a condolence visit and the motive is, okay, if I didn't go, when it happens to me, who will come? So the motives and the motivations, we should scrutinize them critically. The worldly kindness is the type of kindness that ceases when it's not reciprocated. Christ said, if you only do good to those that do good to you, why differentiate you from the publicans? Don't the publicans do the same? So even those that don't have the Holy Spirit, naturally, when you are kind to him, you'll be kind to you. But what differentiates kindness, that is the fruit of the Spirit, is the one that Christ gave an example. He said, God shines sun both on the just and the unjust. He sent his rain both on the just and the unjust. So we are yet seen as Christ died for us. To what extent can we be, can we show our love to people that are not kind to us? That is what makes the difference. Not just reciprocating or depositing it for future use, but a neutral desire to solve people's problem, to make them happy, to relieve them of pain without any selfish motive or motivation. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I remember this is a quotation I shared. If your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he's thirsty, give him to drink. For in doing so, you heap coal of fire on his head. So people did not understand why you should feed your enemy. He didn't understand why he, if that person is thirsty, you are supposed to give the person to drink. And it became a topic of debate for a, a very long time. And then at our church, somebody also asked whether heaping coal on the person's head, uh, is it being reciprocated? But you see, that's a the complex city. And this is used twice in the Bible, in, in Proverbs and also in Romans. That is where you find this particular quotation. Paul was actually lifting from the preacher. And when we use Christ's example that he talked about, it will make us understand why he said this. Because it doesn't mean you are actually the one who is giving out the punishment. But naturally, if you do those things, there is high tendency that a person that guilty conscience will even be following the person. And that is how they heaping that coal. When you pay evil for evil, definitely you are on the same bracket. But once you are rewarding the person with good, we see people come out to even confess. We see people even come out to uh, turn around because of the kind of kindness that the person has shown when they were expecting the person to be hard on them. Sister Esther, you'll take a message. Then Sister Gertrude and Elder Ivan will come. Thank you. Okay. Everybody got to give introduction except to me. So I <laughs> like to do this. I was waiting for your introduction. Uh, then, your introduction, then you're completely. <laughs> not my introduction, but <laughs> I was I was experimenting whilst we were having this discussion because I read to read on which gender shows kindness or is more compassionate. 
Mm -hmm. So whilst we're trying to give our biblical characters of the kind people, I'm, I'm going to see if we would all test that hypothesis. <laughs> see if skin, right? Was skin, right? My skin. Yeah. Wow. But I hope that that was, that was a finding you got. <laughs> that was the finding, finding I got. Wow. Um, concluded that <laughs> the, I, it would be natural. People tend to think that the female gender show more kindness and. I was trying to see what we would all say as a biblical character. And I think what we gave also proved the research or the report I read. And this research tried to look at the brains of human beings to see, or different genders to see if there would be something that would point out to women being more kind or passionate than men. It stated that while there is a difference between the female brain, when you look at it, and the male brain, Nothing points to the fact that women are more compassionate than men. But the research stated that women receive more kindness. People are kind towards the female gender more than men. And that we know is true. Just because of society and certain things, we are seeing, as the Bible will say, the weaker vessels, but not weak as in weak. But we are seen mm -hmm. as the soft ones we need to be cared for. Probably that's why we tend to receive a lot of kindness and compassion than men. And men are seen as strong. But the truth of the whole thing is that we need to be kind to men or compassionate towards them as much as we are to women. Because we are all human beings. And when Christ talked about or when the fruit of the Spirit is mentioned, it is not skewed <laughs> to the female gender. It is towards all of us we are naturally intend to say oh he's a man he can handle it i don't need to be kind but we ought to be kind to one another and i pray that the lord would give us the strength and again i remember somewhere in the last year or last two years when the general conference was coming up with how to reach people if you look at the hundred ways of reaching people the list they were all acts of kindness. I was trying to get that uh, PDF for us to look at. But I remember very well that of all the hundred lists of how to reach people, every one of them pointed to showing kindness, showing compassion, being merciful towards people. And it touched on people we do not know, not people we know, like and the Bible verses that um, Gertrude quoted. It is of no use. It is very important, like Paul says, to show kindness or to be kind towards people of the same faith. But when it comes to reaching people for the sake of God, we are to reach people who do not know God, who are not kind to us. For when we are kind to those who are unkind, that is the true way of us showing that we are real Christians, not when we show to those who are kind to us. So may the Lord give us strength to be kind to both genders and to be kind to even those who are unkind to us. Amen. 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 This again. My take-home message will be from Luke chapter 6, verse 38. One beautiful thing about God and showing kindness is that he returns kindness. He returns it. And those who are saying, oh, I, I hate him, so I don't have to be kind to him. Okay, look at it this way. You are going to offer kindness to somebody that you don't like. But then somebody elsewhere is also going to bless you for that kindness that you did. Just do it. And that person who is God will return that kindness that you did. It's not that person you hate. Who is going to return the kindness, but it is God who is. Because he says in Luke chapter 6, verse 38, that give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together and running over. Shall men give unto your bosom? For with the same measure that ye met without, it shall be measured to you again. So if you don't give, how are we going to multiply it? How are we going to press it down and shake it? Because there is nothing there to press down. There is nothing there to multiply. You have to give. I don't want it to sound like an obligation. But then in that reciprocity, you have to give. How many of us here 
haven't received some blessings that we thought this one, I don't deserve it. But then it came anyway. It is because of some of these simple, simple, small, small acts of kindness that we do to others that opens doors and ways for us in times when we need it. God has promised us that we should give and it shall be given back unto us, multiplied, pressed down, shaken together, overflowing. That is what he's going to pour onto our lap. Let us not be weary of doing good. Amen. 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 Brother Amen. Ivan, what is the take-home message? My take-home message is a look at a slightly different face of kindness. As take children, Proverbs makes us to understand that foolishness abounds in the heart of a child, but the road of correction drives it away. The Bible also made it clear that those that God loves are those he chastises. Kindness does not always come in package that we expect. In the case of children, kindness requires that you correct them with the road of correction. Just how God chastises those he loves. So when someone tries to correct us, we should not look at it as being unkind. It is still part of it. It is still in order for us to correct one another in love, even though it may not sound palatable. But correction, chastisement is not out of context when we talk about kindness. Thank you. Thank you so much. In conclusion, kindness is an essential fruit of the Holy Spirit. It should be evident in the lives of believers. It involves being gentle considerate and helpful towards others. As Christians, we are called to show kindness to one another as Christ has shown us kindness. By the grace of God, next two weeks, we will come away with the last but one discussion on the fruit of the Spirit, which is, can you guess, faith. Then we move to temperance, then we are done. Then we now move to the other side. I think there's so much package that we have for our viewers. They shouldn't be try to subscribe, to share our content, to like, give their comment, their questions. I'll be ready to answer them. There are resources that we also add at the end of the video. When they click on more, there are links to very good resources that they can read to entreat them to do the same. Before we leave them, we will ask Sister Esther Sawi to pray for us and pray for our viewers online. Thank you. Dear Lord, we thank you so much for always giving us this privilege of coming to share your word with each other and even with people from different parts of the world. And every time when we come across your word, when we come in contact with your word, we see where we falter. But we thank you, dear Lord, that in making us see our sinfulness, when we surrender to you, you are able to cleanse us from all unrighteousness and fill us with your Holy Spirit that he works in us the things that we cannot do ourselves. Today we have spoken about kindness. And Lord, we are in a world where people are not so kind towards each other. Everyone is burdened with so much that when it calls for us to be kind towards another, we sometimes mostly think about ourselves and refrain from being kind. But Lord, we have heard that it is of no use for us to be kind to only those who are kind to us, but to be kind to the heathen, to those who are unkind, to those who persecute us, to show compassion one towards another. Lord, we desire to do this, but we do not have strength. So we come to you and ask that you would give us the strength and fill us again today with your Holy Spirit, we cannot have enough of you. We pray that you baptize us all again. Help us be kind towards the people around us. People we come across and encounter in our daily works. And Lord, because kindness is an attribute of Christ, as we are kind, may they see Christ in us. May he be exalted and may men be drawn unto him. We thank you, dear Lord. And we pray for a special blessing on all of our viewers 
that you bless them exceeding and abundantly above all we could ever ask or think of. For we have asked in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you so much for always being with us. I hope you're going to be part of your dictionary. Because when I share that content, somebody said, this is not in my dictionary. I pray that going forward, you add that to your dictionary. And that even though people will try to be parasitic, even though you want symbiotic relationship, even those who are parasites, you will still be kind towards them as Christ did. Until we come your way two weeks, you know, as we absent one from another, say, Miss Pa and bye-bye. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Okay. Can you say hi? Please, let's say hi to our viewers. Um, <laughs> and, uh, you, right? Oh, you know, I'm you. saying bye-bye. Thank <laughs> you.